Here we go. Look, if you're curious about taking your cabinet business, your architecture millwork business, your furniture making business, anything in the finished wood trades, and you're looking for ways to improve your business, I call you a forward facing business owner. It's because you're looking towards the future. If you're curious about running this company like a real business and you want to work smarter, not just harder, if you're looking for tips, uh, tricks, shortcuts, because you understand you want to solve the frustration you're feeling in the areas of time, team, money, growth, people, sales, and marketing, then welcome to the Cabinet Maker Profit System podcast. This show is exactly where we talk about the business of construction and contracting so that you can learn exactly how to move from feeling like you're a, just a contractor with a crew or a couple of crews to being a business person who just happens to be a contractor. And yes, there is a difference. Today's guest is me. Yep, it's a monologue with Dominic. And today we're going to be talking about architectural millwork. How do I turn my business around? And we're going to be using the example of Andy. Andy's an architectural mill worker you'll hear about in the episode. I want you to see the world through the eyes of Andy. I want you to take the story of where he's gone in 13 months, just a little over a year, and see what you can learn. I'm going to ask you to find some nuggets of wisdom, but actually, let me tone that back. I just want you to find one thing. Just find one thing. Focus on that one thing for the next week. Put that thing in place for a week and then come back and get more stuff, right? If you make one little change every single week, you'll make 52 changes over the course of a year and you'll completely outpace all of your competitors. So that's the coaching challenge for you today. I want you to listen very carefully to what I have to say about um, making decisions, slowing down to speed up, what it means to put simple systems in place, what it means to have a plan. We're also going to talk a little bit about lean manufacturing. Now, some of you are thinking, well, Rubino, I don't want to talk about lean. Well, we're going to talk about it on the show, and I'm going to put it in context in a way you might not have considered before. Imagine if your company was already doing one of the things we talk about in the show. And if you're already doing that, imagine if you're doing one, two, three, or four more other things. Where would your business get to? I want you to get to a place where you're so incredibly proud of this business and it's running tickety-boo and you could pass it off to your son, your daughter, your niece, your nephew, somebody else in the family or your foreman and know that they had a great business that was just spitting off cash and doing great work for great people. Let's get to it. Hello, everybody. Well, you know what? I had a cancellation today. I never have cancellations. And it actually wasn't even one of my cancellations. This was, uh, I was going to be a guest on somebody's podcast. And I don't mind telling you, they have overcomplicated this process beyond all belief. I had to do a uh, preparation questionnaire. I had to pre-write a bio. I had to blah, 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 all these things. And they had five or six people on their side that um, needed to be there to record the show. Guys, I hope you don't mind seeing behind the curtain of Oz. I'm alone in my office. Now, Helen is, you know, here just waiting for um, questions and things like that. And Jara's busy doing her thing as Lee is coaching. Like, we're busy, but don't get me wrong. You don't need to overproduce a podcast. It's a pretty simple process. Overcomplicating it, that actually takes more work. Anyways, that leads us to today. I'm going to record a monologue. And I want to tell you the story about, <clears throat> well... You guys already know I'm not going to use real names. We're going to call him Andy. Andy, the architectural mill worker. Uh, you know, we do, uh, I find when I go back and review my episodes that I do a lot of talking about cabinetry and high-end cabinetry, but there's a specific group of you out there and you know who you are and you do architectural mill work. For those of you who aren't familiar with architectural mill work, you know, it's it's beyond cabinets. It's way beyond cabinets. Some architectural mill workers only do um, that really cool woodwork you see at amusement parks, or they're going to do very, very high-end custom commercial tenant improvements for law offices or really cool software firms. Uh, and, and, you know, everybody's got their own shtick, their way of doing things. Some guys just do restaurants, but it's beyond cabinets. Nothing wrong with the cabinet business. It still is the cabinet business, but it's the cabinet business in a very, very specific way. 
regardless of how you are in the finished wood trades, you're going to get a lot of value out of today. And I'm going to reference two different documents as we talk about this. And this cancellation made me think about this because I'm a big fan of Paul Akers and his book, Two Second Lean, um, where he talks about simplicity of things. I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. Don't overcomplicate things and enjoy the beauty, the beauty of a brutally simple system. There's an elegance to a simple system. This podcast I was just supposed to be a guest on has a very complicated bureaucratic system. And if you guys know me, you know, I don't like theory. That is full of theory. I'm all about reality. Let's get stuff done, which is why when you listen to this show, you might think Tom kind of talks like a normal guy. Everything is so reasonable. Everything sounds easy to do. That's because I've been doing this a very long time and I keep working at stripping out the cow poop right? There's got to be a pony in there somewhere, if any of you guys know that uh, that joke. Anyways, as I was thinking about uh, uh, the problems that they have at, at that other podcast organization, I thought about the eight wastes that Paul Akers talks about in Two Second Lean. And listen, if you think that lean manufacturing won't work for your industry, then hang on. Let me just tell you here, well, you know, you have no chance to argue. You are 100% wrong. Wrong. Lean manufacturing is not for repetitive processes. It can be used for repetitive processes. If you are sorting peanuts or grating watermelons, yeah, you might think that's the only place that lean can work. But it absolutely works in custom manufacturing. It makes it works for custom homes. It works for custom millwork. It works for custom sheet metal. It works for custom everything. Everything. And the reason it works is because it focuses on the process, not the product. Anyways, I'll get off my my high horse there. But listen, you just, before we even talk about architectural millwork, follow me for a second. I've just given you the outline of this other podcast. They had to cancel. Think about what kind of wastes they have in their organization. I'm going to list the eight wastes. One of the wastes is defects. Those are efforts caused by rework, scrap, and incorrect information. Did we have rework? Yeah. My calendar is now off kilter. And if you guys know me, you know how much I like having my calendar off kilter. I do not like that at all. So yes, they suffer from defects. The next one is overproduction, producing more than is needed or before it is needed. Hmm. I think we have some overproduction here, but I'll maybe let's give that a 0.5. Waiting. Waiting is one of the wastes. Waiting is defined as wasted time waiting for the next step in a process. Well, I had time set aside on my schedule. They had six people on their side put time aside on their schedule. And because two people couldn't show up at their organization, now they can't do the podcast. I don't know what their production, production, sorry, I don't know what their production schedule is, but now they're waiting. So there, there are two for sure out of the first three. Non-utilized talent is the fourth waste. Underusing people's talents, skills, and knowledge. I got to give you that one. I don't know where they're used doing that, except maybe to think there's probably one person in that company who said, uh, I know how to push the button and I know how to push the button to stop it. And you know how to ask the questions. So we're good to go. Anyways, uh, let's take a pass on non-utilized talent. But I want you to see these ways. We're not talking about podcasts today. We're talking about your business. Remember, this show is about the business of our business, right? It's the business of cabinetry and woodworking. We need to look around everywhere for inspiration, for ideas, for ways to move forward. I've got a very good friend and past client down in Baton Rouge, brilliant guy, always looking, always looking for ways he can improve his team, ways he can make the most of the people he's got, right? Really great guy, really heart leading guy. And he understands that He's got to temper some of these wastes, knowing that he's going to get to that bottleneck when he gets to it, but he's getting to them all one by one, right? I want you to be that same way. Here's the next waste, transportation, unnecessary movement of products and materials. Uh, let's let that one pass. I could probably stretch it to make it work, but it doesn't work in this situation. The other problem that other company has, inventory. Do you have an inventory problem? Excess products and materials not being processed. I and podcast inventory for that other podcast company, and I'm not being processed. I was ready and waiting to go. What if I say no? What if I can't get on the show for another six months? Now they're waiting again, and they've got an inventory problem. Do you have an inventory problem at your shop? Excess products and materials not being processed. Speaking with another architecture millwork firm, they have racks. in a. They just bought this company. 
They have racks, which you would expect. Yeah, it's good that they have racks. Rolling racks, absolutely, they are rolling racks. But all of the material gets laid down flat. And so what happens when it moves to the next station is the next guy's got to unpack it, find his piece, and put them all back again without scratching or marring or denting or dinging it. Okay, that is an inventory problem. It's an overproduction problem. You're begging for defects. You know, so many things, right? Isn't it interesting? We're talking about my frustration today about a podcast company that couldn't get me on their schedule, even though I was scheduled on their schedule. Makes no sense. But all of it applies to our business as well. And my other reference, I've got one more waste, there are two more ways to give you. My other reference for this is uh, a report. Some of you may have seen this, depending on how long you've been around. It's called the Ultimate Get Things Under Control Guide for Contractors. And it outlines all of these things. And there's case studies and there's actions in it. So I'm using both of these as my references today. If you want to download that, I'll tell you how to later. Um, the other uh, waste is motion, unnecessary movement of people. So I guess, you know, unnecessary movement of meetings on the schedule. And then the last one is extra processing, more work or higher quality than is required by the customer. I'm going to give that one uh, a negative for this particular situation because we didn't have to reschedule it. Just push a button, hit record. We're good to go. It can't be that complicated. I've produced almost 400 episodes and I do it with my index finger and my mouth. That's it. Well, my brain's back there too. But you know what I mean? Now, oh, sorry. I don't want to take away from all the fantastic guests we have on the show. And I have two shows. That's why there's 400 episodes between the two shows. But it's not complicated. Neither is your business. Your business needs to run on simple systems. And so I put together this list. Let's go back to Andy. Andy, the architecture mill worker, an absolute stress case. When he first contacted me, the poor guy was just at the end of his rope, just absolutely stressed, being pulled in multiple directions, right? Phone was ringing <clears throat> off the hook. It's going all the time. In our first couple of meetings, he could not have a straight meeting without getting calls or text messages to interrupt him. It's no wonder he was stuck in his company. Let me actually give you, uh, obviously, Andy's not his name, and I'm not going to tell you where he is. That None of that is relevant. What's relevant is where he was and where he got to. So when we started, he was already running a great business doing just about 2 million bucks. He was actually at 1.8 million in sales per year. Now, some of you aren't at that level, but listen to the story and understand you're going to take away one thing today, just one. And I want you to put that thing in place in your business, right? He had nine people, sales was 1.8 million. So his revenue per full-time employee, 200,000. It's actually pretty strong, not bad, but he wasn't profitable. So he was taking wages. His salary was around 80K. So that's not bad, but it wasn't profitable. The company wasn't profitable. So, and then sometimes, of course, he didn't take the salary, but his salary was on the books at 80K. And listen, working with me is not free. So he had to take a serious jump to bring on a business coach. But let's look at the results. We're into it a year now. So 12 months, it's actually just a little over a year, like 13 or 14 months, but call it a year. And here's what he's been able to do in his business. Before he had nine people, now he has 10. He has one extra person. And you're going to say, well, Dom, how did he afford that extra person if he was already like skating by? Well, the 10th person he added was an admin, somebody to help him in the office. Because, oh, I almost said his name. Because Andy, this poor guy, was doing everything. The administrivia was killing him, just sending out samples and getting samples back. Just one question from uh, the coding supplier would take a half a day of work, just tracking to How could he get anything done? Let's look at the lean wastes that he eliminated or started to, to drop by having an administrator. Uh, overproduction dropped, waiting dropped, non-utilized talent. So his own talent got utilized more. Uh, transportation, inventory, motion, unnecessary movement. So he reduced his motion. You know, one of the things, he had a time tracking system in place. No problem. Some of you have it, some don't. That's that's fine for now. You're going to need a time tracking system in place as you grow your business. But where does motion come into time tracking? Well, he couldn't walk out on the floor and ask everybody, hey, are you time tracking? He had a foreman in that group, but you still have to manage it from the office. So now his administrator, every once in a while, just picks up her clipboard, walks down to the shop, talks to the guys and says, what job are you logged into? I just want to check. And that little bit of reminder gets people logged in. It gets the EOJs done. It gets the EOJ summaries, all of the things we put in place in 12, 13 months. 
It's not that long. And by the way, now he's at 2.3 million. So he did, we did go up 500K in a year, right? Um, he takes salary. And of course, now he's got net profit, which means there's money in the company. Now, some of you listening are going, well, Dom, my accountant tells me I've got money in the company as well. So we're we're covered there. Now, I don't know where that money is, Dom, you understand, but my accountant says it's there. <clears throat> what? No, <laughs> I'm glad your accountant says it's there, but we got to get it out for you or at least you be able to grab it. What if you need a new CNC or a spray booth or you want to put a heating system in, right? What if you're, uh, the, your, your, your valves blow and you need to be able to pay for that? You don't want to take it out of cash flow because you got a big deal. You need to have, why am I explaining why you need profit? Am I actually doing that? Let's keep going. Um, he now knows his numbers. We're going to get into that a little bit. He knows his numbers, but I'm, I'm not talking about accounting numbers. Without going into too much detail here today, your accountant's job is to reduce your taxes. Your accountant's job is to reduce your taxes. My job as your coach is to increase your profits. So we don't play with the books, but I look at operational figures that are forward facing. Your accountant looks at stuff that happened in the past. We both have our jobs and our roles, right? The reason somebody works with a business coach is because they want a vision for the future. Nothing wrong with an accountant. You need a great accountant. You need one that gives you the reports on time that we want to see them. But you also need an advisor of some sort, somebody who helps you get out of the day-to-day -day and have some focus for the future. And then say, this is where I want to go. What roadblocks are we going to hit? How do we smash those roadblocks? How do we turn those roadblocks into opportunities? And when do we get started? That's what a coach does, whether you use me or somebody else. Anyways, let's go back to Andy for a second. Here are the steps for him to not be a stress case anymore and how he turned it around. And, and again, remember what I'm using here for reference are the eight wastes of lean and the ultimate get the, the booklet or the, the free download called the ultimate get things under control guide for contractors. You can always text me and ask for that if you want. Just, uh, oh, my, I, I changed my cell. I changed my cell because I'm a dumb dumb. I spent the last couple of years putting my cell phone number at the end of every podcast and somebody in some foreign country scraped that. And now I get all sorts of very interesting telemarketing calls. So I have a new cell phone number for you to text me at. I might as well tell you now, but I'll, I'll remind you later. If you want that guide or anything else, just text me here. 315-903-7853. That's my new cell number to text me at. 315-903-7853. And yes, I have controls on there to make sure this just doesn't happen again. Anyways, uh, let's go through the four things that Andy had to put in place. Number one, he had to decide. Number two, he actually had to slow down to speed up. Remember, I said he was an absolute stress case. Poor guy. Number three, simple systems, but some new simple systems. And don't get me wrong. Andy was doing pretty good. He built that company from zero to $1.8 million, almost $2 million in sales a year. And he did that before he and I ever met. This guy is no slouch. Andy knows that he's being featured in today's show. And he knows that I love and respect him beyond all measure. He was already doing great, but he was maxed out. You guys might've heard me say this before. When I say max out, he was running a $1.8 million business on $1 million systems. Think about that for a second. That's like trying to take your old beat up Volkswagen rabbit and putting it in a race against a Lamborghini. You're going to pin that thing. And no matter how hard you pin that, you're just, you're probably going to blow up the engine on that little washing machine car before you ever catch up with the Lamborghini because you're using the wrong system. You still have a vehicle, it's vehicle against vehicle, but you came with a beat up old Volkswagen Rabbit and somebody else showed up in a Lamborghini. Both vehicles, both have four wheels and a steering, steering wheel and seats. They're very different seats, very different finish, but they're both cars, right? What's the difference? It's how you use the tool and is the tool able to help you get there? Are you using the right tool for the job? Simple systems. He was trying to run a $1.8 million business on million dollar systems. By the way, let's just jump forward to my point at the end. He's now at $2.3 million, just about 13 months later. He's at 2.3. We raised a 500 grand, but we didn't do it by aiming at 2.3 million. No. And, it, and those of you who have worked with me or have heard me for any amount of time know we aim for five. Because what happens if we fail? If we fail in hitting five and we hit four, did we really fail? What happens if you shoot for the stars and instead you just hit the moon? Is it really a failure? 
Now his vision is he's going to 5 million, which just happened to be a 2.3 right now. Oh, by the way, that's a $500,000 lift in 12, 13 months. Not bad. Great story to tell when you come home, kiss your wife and hug your kids, right? Uh, and then step number four, repeat. Okay, I'm going to repeat this again. Here are the four things that he did. Decide. So number one, he had to decide. Number two, slow down to speed up. Number three, simple systems. And number four, repeat. Remember, it's easy to overcomplicate things. That's how we started the show. This other podcast, great people, by the way, but they rescheduled. Why? Why do you have six people involved in pushing a button? Six. You don't need that. Massive overproduction. Massive, massive overcomplication. And by the way, if you ask the other five people, there's one person that you need. The other five people would tell you exactly why they're critical, critical to that process because they want to keep their jobs. The entrepreneur, the owner, you and I, we see the world a little bit differently. We want efficiency. We want effectiveness. We don't want a lot of wasted time. Speaking of wasted time, let's get to it. Okay. So here are one of the risks that he had when we first met. Remember, he's an architecture mill worker. One of the risks he had in doing commercial tenant improvements for GCs is he was kind of stagnant in which GCs he worked with, right? He needed some new ones. And we figured that out pretty quickly through some exercises that we did right up front. One company was a little over 60% of the work he was doing. So 60% of his dollar volume came from one GC. That's a massive, oh my gosh, that's a big risk factor. The most you ever want any customer to be is about 20% of your total sales, your total production. Why? Because you have put way too many eggs in one basket. You've overproduced one customer. What you actually need to do is go back and not drop that GC. Let's say he's Gary, the general contractor. Um, that wouldn't be the right name for a GC of this size. These guys are are doing lobbies of massive apartment buildings and shopping malls. But um, you, you have to go find some other customers because this guy at 60% of your total volume owns you. If he doesn't pay, you have a receivables problem. He's just got a tough phone call. You've got a line of credit problem. You have a tough conversation at the kitchen table about taking a line of credit out on your home to make payroll for a crew you have to keep happy so that we get done. And the GC just has to say no or ignore you for a little while. You can't let any one customer be more than 20% or they control you. There's actually a funny saying, you guys might've heard this before in the media as well, that if I owe the bank a million dollars, I am in a lot of trouble. If I owe the bank a hundred million dollars, they are in a lot of trouble, right? And so the same goes here with any one client. If any one client is too much of my total business, I'm in a lot of trouble. And so that doesn't mean you drop how much you're doing with Gary, the GC that does apartment buildings and malls. Uh, you got to go find some other clients. So what we did is we did an ideal customer exercise, right? And we go through this in the ultimate get things under control guide for reducing your stress is you've got to be proactive about your marketing. Too many of us here have just said, I don't know, we've got five GCs that send us business. Life is pretty good. We're busy as we are. I don't see a need to go get other clients. Well, you do if you've got one guy giving you 60% of your work, you've got to go find some other work. The net benefit to Andy, oh my gosh, I almost said it again. We've got a raise of 500,000 in sales, but you'll notice that the only extra person we put on was an administrator because we found efficiencies on his floor as well. Okay. So ideal customer led us over to some new marketing, new marketing led us to new customers and marketing in architectural mill work. We're not talking about taking a bill out billboards at the, on the highway or sponsoring your kid's soccer team. We're talking about very sniper type of marketing. You put together a list of who you want as a customer. And then one by one, you go through them. And at the end of the day, it's really simple. You call the next general contractor on the phone and say, hi, this is Dominic calling. I'd like to do your next millwork package. And he says, yeah, who the heck are you? To which you respond, well, I'm glad you asked. There you go, folks. Today's full of value just because I'm frustrated at getting rescheduled from somebody. The other risk factor he had was people. Who here? Put your hands up, folks. Put your hands up. Send me a text message right now with the letters A-R-G-H-H-H-H-H -H 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 if you have a people problem. Ugh! 
who has a people problem right now? I mean, it's a serious thing. By the way, for those of you who are new to listening to my podcast, I love to goof around, but I'm serious as shit. I just like to have fun while I'm doing it. So I do go for do goof around, but please don't mistake that for not being focused and disciplined about what I do here. I just really like to smile and have fun while we're doing it. Because why not? We are kicking, you know what, and taking names. We're in control. That's what the show is about, being in control of your business. What a better place to be. So yeah, sometimes I goof around and sometimes I make jokes and they're usually bad jokes, but let it ride. Smile with me and go make the change. Um, here's the problem. Uh, the other problem you had was on people. So project managers, who here has a, well, I, mean, I don't want you to think about it this way, but he had a project management challenge, problem, right? He needed a PM that was better than him. We had a little hiccup here because we went through two to find one. So the first one, let me back up. Both project managers that were hired inside this, you know, basically one year time frame, technically brilliant, technically skilled at architecture mill work. The first guy had fatal flaws that we didn't see, didn't think about. Here's the fatal flaws. Um, the, uh, the guy that we didn't keep, we're going to call him Larry, emotional. Good enough was good enough, right? So these are some characteristics of him. He was an emotional kind of guy. Good enough was good enough. And he was a talker instead of a listener. Now that might work in your firm. That might be the right kind of person for you. That's why I'm a little cautious here. But in this particular firm with Andy as the leader, that style wasn't going to work. It just didn't jive. And so that didn't last very long. What we eventually found is a gentleman who also technically brilliant in the in, mill work and in installations and in dealing with people, but he was a detail oriented guy, a little bit more technical, if I can say that, and completely unemotional. And I'm talking about the kind of unemotional you do not want to sit at the poker table with like good day or bad day. His face doesn't change. It's always the same. Can't fluster him to save your world. And of course, in architecture mill work, when we've got very demanding installation schedules, very demanding metrics and specifications and trades coming in that don't care about your mill work package, they just want to do what they need to do. You need somebody unflappable, right? Unflappable is the word. Uh, sorry, for Andy, that kind of person worked best. You will have your own decisions to make on a PM. So, we swapped out, you know, of the first nine people, the first project manager didn't make it. That's another story for maybe another episode or a private call with me. But uh, we replaced learning what was in place for that first PM before we hired the second one or the replacement. We sat down and said, what didn't work? Like the person was great. Guy was fine. Larry was fine. But then we found Wes and Wes met the standards that we intentionally set out. And by the way, and Paul Akers talks about this in Two Second Lean, it's the intent that helps you win the game. We have intent. A business coach like myself, I have intent. My pure intent, the only thing I care about is the owner of the business. I want to make sure they are educated, informed. They have solid goals. They are reminded of those goals. There's a little bit of accountability. You guys know I like to goof around, so we keep it light where we can, but it's got to be heavy sometimes too. Sometimes the conversations are tough, but you know what? Have the tough conversation and it's not so tough. Avoid a tough conversation. It gets worse and worse and worse, right? So my job as a coach, my job as a business person is to just lay the cards on the table and say, look, these are the cards. How are we going to deal with them? You have a big conversation. You go, okay, which card's more important than the others? And so one card moves up, one card moves down. You're like, okay, well, if that's the card that's first, what do we need to do next? And it's that kind of pure logic, brutal logic without emotion that helps people march forward. Look at Andy's oh. look at Andy's results so far. If you count numbers as his results, he's increased one staff person, but he's up 500k in sales. He's at 2.3. But he's taking home more money and by the way, the other part of the insanity, this relates straight back to the ultimate get things under control guide is controlling his time. Because instead of being reactive all the time, we've started to help him be proactive. That PM now takes the bulk of those calls. Meetings happen on a regular basis inside the company and they're short. 
you guys might hate meetings and I, I get it. I hate meetings too. They suck. Well, hold on. Long meetings that go nowhere suck. But proper meetings that have a, a sharp, short agenda that are made to accomplish something, those meetings are great. Little touch points all the way through keeps your company in line. That's, that's all you really need, right? So he's put some things in place. Let's now go back and test ourselves against those eight wastes that we talked about that started this episode because I was a bit frustrated at the other podcast company. And then in sort of case study format, I'm going to also re review the ultimate get things under control guide for contractors. By the way, if you want that document, just text me at that new number. Just say, um, get things under control and they'll... I'll shoot it off to you, right? Get things under control. Um, in, in that document, we talk about the things that were stressing Andy. It almost lines up perfectly. His time, his own personal time. He was being pulled in a gajillion directions. Not to mention, he's a dad. And he wanted to be there with his family. He wanted to see the things his kids were doing. And his wife has her own life. And that, you know, sometimes he has to be home to take care of the kids so she can go do her things, right? So time, his team, we talked a little bit about people, but there's a lot of moving pieces around people. One of the things on people was if we weren't keeping track of people logging in, then they wouldn't log into a job. You know, they wouldn't punch their codes into a job. And if you didn't catch them punching a code into a job today and nobody said anything, why would they do it tomorrow? And things really, it was a hot cold. Like they were on it, they were off it, they were on it, they were off it. Sometimes we had the data, sometimes we didn't. And so the administrator actually helped a lot with taking that stress off his head. Money, uh, of course, the other stress that, that people feel is money and financial. And I get it. You know, being a business owner, you you got a lot of financial resources at risk. He has another 500 grand with which to play. And by the way, that's profitable money. We have to change his pricing a little bit. And you know what's funny is people are like, well, if I change my prices, those GCs, man, they don't want to buy this stuff. They're not going to use us. Yeah, right. You guys know what the market's like right now. As I've said before, we are in a time of price elasticity. That is Dom being very professorial. You can charge a lot more than you think you can charge. And when people start to say no, then you know you've gone too high. But you know you got to also trust that you've got more room than you think. But along with that becomes, actually, it's not even in my notes here, but he got really disciplined about change orders, which, by the way, the new project manager, Wes, got to make sure I don't say the real names, Wes was very good at. Wes was very good at change orders. He actually brought a lot of the, the muscle, the brain power to change orders and change order management to his credit. I mean, I was waving the flag. Wes was the guy with boots on the ground on that. Um, then less stress in general by having simple systems to follow, which comes from keeping it simple and rinsing and repeating. Just rinse and repeat. That's all you got to do. You can get there. You can get there. You only need a couple of reference documents, right? Go go on the internet and find the eight wastes of lean and look at it. Grab a cup of coffee, sit in the corner, put your headphones in, go to a nice coffee shop, leave the office. I need you to be in a different environment. Get creative. Creativity is going to solve your problems, not money. Creativity will solve your problems. Go to the corner of a nice coffee shop, the nicest coffee shop in your town. Hopefully it's not just like a Dunkin' or a Panera, although I would take Panera over Dunkin' or a Starbucks in a really nice part of town. But think about that. Go to a nice place, a little marble table, you and a piece of paper, and think the big things. That's what your job is. That's what my job is. We're business leaders. There's eight or 10 people. Well, in, in Andy's company, there's 10 people that rely on him. He needs to think about the future of the company. And so use these eight ways to think. Does my company have defects? Do we have overproduction? Do we have waiting? Do we have non-utilized talent? Do we have transportation issues? Do we have inventory issues? Do we have motion issues? Do we have extra processing issues? And you think, oh my God, Dom, as you read that list, we have all of those in our shop. Aha, hang on a second. I wasn't talking about the shop. I wasn't talking about the shop. Business operations, the office, the overall flow of things. Do you have defects? in how the office runs and the overall flow of how the customer comes in. We, we win the job, we produce the job, we invoice for the job, we get paid for the job. Are there any defects there that are driving you bonkers? What about overproduction? Are two people doing the same job? Is there a lot of overlap? Here's one that just came up the other day in my company, believe it or not. 
somebody was shopping for answers. They would ask one person a question, then they would ask me a question, then they'd go ask somebody else the same question. Huh. They no longer do that. We had a very specific conversation. That's overproduction right there. You get one answer and you move on. If you don't like the answer, too bad. That's the answer. Um, I say a lot nicer than that. You guys know, but I'm getting riled up here doing a monologue by myself. Um, waiting. Do you have a waiting problem in the office? Are you waiting too long for samples to come back? Are you waiting too much for architectural architectural drawings? Is there too much waiting between a customer phoning in and getting a nice response back? Is there too much waiting processing a bill? Is there too much waiting uh, logging into, punching into jobs, right? Non-utilized talent. Do you have talent that's not being used right? Transportation. Transportation is not just jumping in a truck. Do you have people walking across the office to hand over pieces of paper when that could be electronic in a shared Google Drive or OneDrive, whatever, right? What about inventory? Do you have excess products and materials not being processed? Do you have job packages not being processed? Do you have job packages waiting in engineering, not moving down to the CNC for some weird little reason? Do you have that? Motion, unnecessary movements. And then extra processing, which is more work or higher quality than is required by the customer. Think about those things. I mean, if you have those, that's fine. But don't be afraid. Write it down. This is the list of my bottlenecks. If I could fix all these things, what would my company look like? At some point, I guess, you know, if I've been working with Andy for 13 months, he thought about this 14 months ago. He's like, I got to solve these problems. Maybe Rubino's got the answer. And so he called me and, you know, we figured something out. And now look at him. He's got 10 people. So he only added one more person. Sales are 2.3 million, up 500 grand. He's now take, still taking a salary, but he has net profit in the business. And we know about that, right? We know the exact number. And he knows his numbers. His stress is coming down. He's still working a little too much, but he's getting better all the time. We could find him time. And I don't find you time an hour at a time. I find five minutes here, 10 minutes there. And when you add those up a hundred times a day, that's where you get your hours back. Thank you for checking into today's episode. I know it started in a different industry where I was talking about a podcast, but they have waste in their business that needs to be fixed. It's frustrating the end user, in this case, me. Are you frustrating your end user? Could you be making the business leaner? Could you go find other clients? And don't tell me there's five architecture mill workers in your town and there's only five GCs, so we're kind of stuck. If you can tell me that, but then I will also ask you not to ever reach out to me. <laughs> There's more opportunity than you know. And I know that because I deal with architecture mill workers all over North America all day long. And this guy's got that niche. And this guy's got that niche. And this guy in Chicago does something different than the guy in Detroit. The guy in Detroit does something totally different than the guy in Vancouver. The guy in Vancouver is totally different than the guy in Toronto. And you all think you have a secret and you don't. Sorry, you don't. There is more business out there waiting, which is why you have competitors, because they know those niches and they're not going to tell you. I, on the other hand, will. I don't do it city to city, but of course, I'm like a bee. I pollinate from flower to flower and I take great ideas from one market and I apply them to another. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much for checking in. If you have, uh, if you want to get the ultimate get things under control guide, then text me, okay? And uh, text me, what did we say? Text me, get things under control. And uh, the new number to text me at is 315-903-7853. So that's a SMS, a text message, 315-903-7853. And so right now, just take your phone and say, get under control. If you text me that, then I'll shoot you back that report. Again, when you're sitting at a nice coffee shop, you can work your way through it, right? And it's all there in, in just, it's one document. It's like nine pages or oh, 10 pages, I'm sorry. So it's easy to print off, very easy to print off. There's nothing fancy, but then you can work in the margins and you can actually figure out the next steps you need to take. So just grab your phone, text me at 315-903-7853 and just say, get under control. And then do me a favor, do not send that number to people over in the subcontinent. You know what I mean there. Uh, all right, folks, thanks for checking in. Talk to you soon. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna start off with a quick dad joke here. A couple of dad jokes to get your mind open to the opportunities that the world is providing you. And you guys know the reason I do dad jokes because I want you to see the world a little bit differently. You know, imagine that you you bought a new house, beautiful house, house of your dreams. And you walk upstairs and uh, the first room you see on your right has a big sign on it. And it says, fire, 
And so you're like, oh my God, I got to go in there and check it out. And so you go in there and you're a firefighter. You come out of that room and you're like, gee, I really want to get down this hallway. And you see another door and it says fire. And you're like, oh, I better go in there, check it out. And it's just fire after fire after fire, door after door. But at the end of the hall, you can see a couple of doors that say creativity, inspiration, success, relaxation. And no matter how hard you try, you just can't make it to the end of that hallway because every door you pass is marked fire with a big old exclamation mark on it. You can't get there unless your mind is open. You can't clear off those doors that say fire on them unless your mind is open. And that's what the dad jokes do. Yeah, they're goofy. I get it. They're funny. They're supposed to be funny. I want you to tell them to other people and get dry laughs and and, uh, rolled eyes. That's the point of them. But the reason I do it is to open up your mind, because today we're going to be talking about a very simple system. We're going to dissect that system together. But in order to understand it, you have to be in um, what we call entrepreneur mode. You've got to be in a future-focused mode. So um, let's do that. Let's tell a couple of jokes here. And I'm trying to go with a podcast theme in today's dad jokes. You guys ready? Open your mind. What do you call a monk with a podcast? Well, that would be called an air fryer. Actually, a couple of my friends have started a podcast where they argue about their cheese opinions, believe it or not. Yeah, they just argue about their cheese opinions. And the show is called K. So those of you who speak Spanish will get that one. Um, And then you guys know that just before this, uh, I was supposed to be on another podcast. And uh, one of the preview questions they sent me is they said, Uh, describe yourself in three words. And so I replied, not very good at following instructions. That one's a slow burn. I'm sure you're going to get that in a second. Uh, All right, listen, let's get to dissecting a system here. And uh, in order to do that, let me me lay out the situation for you. Now, when you imagine, as you probably are running this business and you've been running it for a while now, you have uh, done what everybody's dream is, which is to take a business though that... uh, started from zero or started very small and you've built it and you've built it and you've built it. But the way you've built it is pure strength and determination. You just, you won't be stopped. You have a work ethic like nobody else. But you've probably also found that at some point, working harder has stopped working. It's diminishing returns. The more energy you put in, you're not getting returns back out, right? And so for some reason, it feels like no matter how hard you try, getting ahead has stopped. And so like I said, working harder has stopped working. And so as you listen to this show, different episodes of of, uh, of this show, um, you hear me talking about stop the insanity, which is something that we do in coaching to just stop people from bugging you every single minute. Or if you're on the contractor strategy group, a couple of weeks ago, you might have seen me post a picture of a gorilla, a pizza, and a gun. A gorilla, a pizza, and a gun. And I just left it hanging there And that comes from a very old Harvard Business Review article talking about time management and how we need to be as business owners in managing our own time. And the the big saying from that article, it's it's pretty in your face, is uh, you don't want to get the monkey on your back. And in order to do that, you have to remember that the monkey either must be fed or shot. I know that's bang in your face, but that's what Stop the Insanity is about. It's not taking the monkey onto your back. When people come to you every second to ask you questions that are clearly written on the plans or that are in the specs from uh, whoever whoever, uh, drew that up, why do they have to keep coming to you? And so it's not that you just ask that question out of frustration. You need a system in place to move it back to your people, right? Maybe the phone won't, won't stop ringing. Like you're busier than you've ever been. The phone won't stop ringing and you find yourself busy, but not profitable. You're working way too hard for what you're making. And you might even have a situation where um, I'm going to assume you like golfing. You know, people have all sorts of hobbies. I'm not sure what your hobby is, but uh, let's say it's golf. It could be fishing. It could be pickleball. It could be going water skiing. I don't, it don't, you know, it could be skiing, whatever it is. Right. But your friends go golfing and they've said to themselves, you know, you know, Hey, we're going to go on a boys trip. We're going to go away this weekend. They say, Hey, should we ask Dom? And then one of them goes, ah, he can never make it anyway. I mean, don't even ask them. It's just going to make them feel bad. And again, your friends all go away on a golf trip and you have to say no. Or you have to go like one of one of the audience here. I know he's uh, planned a mule deer hunting trip. 
which is great. Um, imagine not being asked to go to a mule deer hunting trip that you really wanted to go to or a fishing trip because they know you're just going to say no. If that's happened and yet you've been working so hard to get here, that's a problem. It's a problem we could fix, right? The problem with it is that you're overworked and you're underpaid. Now, when I say underpaid, you're making wages and maybe you're even making a bit of profit on paper. Like your accountant at the end of the year comes to you and says, congratulations, Dom, you've made money in this business. And you say, I don't know how you guys do your math because I didn't actually make, like, where's this profit I see on paper? There's some problems behind that that we can talk about in a bit as well. But you generally, you're overworked and underpaid for the effort you're doing. There's no way that if you quit this, shut down your business and you went to work in the in the regular world, you'd get paid what you get paid now for doing the amount of work you do. There's just no way, right? Um, and every day starts to feel like a repeat, groundhog day, like you're stuck in a loop or on a treadmill. And these are the things I've heard back from people, by the way. It's just a life of stress and frustration pulled in a million directions. And maybe you thought the business was fun before, you know, the first time you built um, uh, a kitchen for your aunt. It was fantastic. You had a great sense of feeling, but now everything just comes with problems. When you've got those problems, it means the impact is that the impact's probably spreading through the company. It's probably spreading through your family, maybe your own physical life. Maybe you're not feeling as, as good as you should. Maybe you're smoking more. Maybe you're drinking more. Maybe you want to drink less or smoke less, but those things are piling up inside you. And uh, of course, that's also flowing over into the company couple of systems are consistently causing problems. We've got a couple of people on the team that are causing issues. We've got some quality control issues. We've got a client who's always a headache. The impact starts to spread from very simple places, right? So the, the tool that I want to talk about here, if you find yourself in that situation, is that you, the good news is also the bad news. You're not alone. Look, we've been running contracting businesses, uh, well, you all know who was a carpenter a very long time ago. We've been around for at least 2,023 years. So why are we all going to our shops assuming that we're the only ones who've dealt with these issues, dealt with customer issues, supply issues, hiring issues, recruiting people, training issues, culture issues, uh, money issues. Those have been around forever. And yet in your shop, in your own way, you're trying to reinvent the wheel every day. Please stop doing that. Um, what I'd like you to do is actually join a, a training that I'm doing. Uh, and that training only deals with time, team, and money. It's one hour. It's a free training. It's actually a webinar and you get on there, take notes. It's all PowerPoint, right? So you can just take notes as you go. But I want you to get the high points because the direction I'm going to take will surprise you. The direction I'm going to take will surprise you because it's going to be Actually, earlier I talked about that long hallway and you're going in, in and out of every door and it's firefighting, firefighter, fire, firefighting. But what I'm going to show you is creativity and inspiration and success. The mindset of business leadership. Remember back, and I've said this many times, this show is for those of you who are forward-facing business owners who want to be a contractor who just, or business person who just happens to be a contractor right? You have to think a little bit differently. And I try to focus on that in the shows when I have a chance, but I'm going to put them in order so you can see how they stack. Because seeing them in relation to each other is going to help you understand how the puzzle pieces fit together. So we're going to talk about time. The most important aspect of time is something that's going to totally floor you. Then we're going to talk about team, your people. It's actually a picture. There's a simple picture. You need, and you need to see the picture to understand it. But once you see the picture, you'll get it. And once you get to the point where you can share that picture with your team, they'll get it. And that's what we want, right? So we've got time, we've got team, then we've got, of course, money. And you know, we talk a lot about money on the show because of course, that's what you expect. I'm a business coach and I show people how to be more profitable. Like Andy spoke about today from 1.8 to 2.3 million. And that's not even the point of the story. The point of the story is he had to decide, he had to slow down to speed up, he needed simple systems and put that on repeat. And he goes, he's the same guy, went from 1.8 to 2.3, but we're on our way to five. Why can't that be you? Isn't it your turn? It is. I think it's your turn. I think everybody should be on this path. Why not? What's the worst that could happen if you improved? What's the worst that could happen if you were less stressed? What's the worst thing that could happen if you got home earlier, were able to take your... Uh, your daughter to art or, or your son to band. What's the worst thing that could happen? 
If you were the parent that you always wanted to be, what is the worst thing? Well, there is no worst thing. You can, I was saying this to a, um, actually, believe it or not, a closet company. Uh, and I was training the closet designers on something. And one of the lines that came up actually from a Kara Woodhouse interview that we did a couple of episodes back, she's a New York City interior designer. And I had her on uh, talking about interior design in New York, et cetera. And one of the things she said, I shared with this class of interior de- of uh, closet designers, I can't build you the closet of your dreams if I don't know your dreams. And that came from Kara Woodhouse. If you haven't heard that episode, go back and listen to it. I can't build you the home of your dreams, the kitchen of your dreams, the uh, the restaurant of your dreams, the law firm of your dreams, if I don't know your dreams. I can't help you build the company of your dreams if you don't have dreams, if I can't help you find those dreams. Right. Anyways, come to the, the training. It's free. It's a webinar. You just log in and, and sit there and listen. I'll, I'm doing all the work. Um, you just have to take notes. But it's all about time, team, and money, right? But I'm going to show you three concepts that have to link together. If you want to join that, just send me a text message and say free training. You guys know the cell. We were talking about it earlier. I have a a new cell phone number, uh, 315-903-7853. This one has some controls on it so that, you know, these guys can't spam me anymore. But just say free training, you know, grab your phone, text me the word free training, and the number is 315 nine zero three seventy eight fifty three and then when you're in that training just make sure you're in a place that's confidential you know you have your headphones in so other people aren't listening um certainly for that training you can be in your truck if you can't get out of the shop or if people are always going to tug at you if they're going to pull at you or go somewhere nice take the call from home just text me free training at three one five nine zero three seventy eight fifty three and then block the time off you'll get the uh, registration info back. But what I mean is then block that time to not be in the office or, or better said, be somewhere you can focus, be somewhere where you do have creativity, do you, where you can be inspired, where you can think about success, but that's not going to be on the shop floor with everybody else and the CNC running and the forklift running and workmen coming up to you asking questions. You don't need that, right? This is a training for business owners, business owners that want to run their shop like a business. And if you want to do that, and like I said, shoot me, shoot me a text, just say free training. And you guys have heard the cell again, or you've heard the cell, but some of you have my old number. Don't text that number. Text this new one, 315-903-7853. Say free training, and then I'll send you all the registration info, and then we'll talk there. And what we're going to learn about in that meeting is the three elements of time, team, and money. So think about the impact of just leveling up a little bit in each of those categories, learn a little bit more about time and time management, learn a little bit more about team and building the right type of team in your business. And then of course, money. Anyways, if that's of interest, I look forward to seeing you there. It'd be nice to put faces to the names because we do it as a Zoom call. Uh, And yeah, I look forward to it. Thanks for checking in folks. Have a great day.